Hi, my name is Josh Ryer. I'm the Director of Utility Programs and Initiatives here at the Connecticut Public Utilities Regulatory Authority. I'm going to provide a, a brief overview of the non-residential renewable energy solutions program effective February 1st of 2022. The non-residential renewable energy solutions program is, will replace the low and zero emissions renewable energy credit program, or also known as the LREC CREC program that has been successfully administered by the electric utilities over the last 10 years. It, and it will also replace the current virtual net metering or VNM program. The first request for proposals or RFP for, under this new program will be issued on February 1st of 2022 and bids for that first year of the program will be due March 14th of that same year. The program will be six years. In the first year, 2022, there will only be one solicitation, which uh, as I mentioned earlier, the RFP will be released in February 4. And in subsequent years, so years two through six of the program or 2023 through 2027, there will be two solicitations per year. And like the LRAC ZREC program, this new program will be administered by the electric utility companies Eversource and United Illuminating. And depending on where your project is located, you would submit a bid into either Eversource's RFP or United Illuminating's RFP. This new program is authorized to select 60 megawatts per year under the Connecticut General Statute Section 16244Z. 50 megawatts of the authorized procurement capacity is for zero emissions projects only, and 10 megawatts is for both low and zero emissions projects. Addition, some additional eligibility details. Uh, projects are only eligible if they're a wind, solar, or fuel cell project that is less than two megawatts. The term of the conditions or the length of the contract uh, that these projects will enter into is for 20 years. And there are two types of tariffs um, that, that customers and projects are eligible for, either a buy-all tariff or a netting tariff. So to get into some of the details of the two different tariffs that I just mentioned, and tariffs really are just the terms and conditions under which the projects will operate. Uh, the buy-all tariff is for a fixed or flat compensation over that 20-year contract term that was mentioned. Projects that select the, the buy-all tariff will receive quarterly payments for both the energies that they produce, as well as what are called RECs, or the Renewable Energy Certificates or Credits that the projects produce. Under the netting tariff, which is very similar to current net metering, uh, any excess production that is provided to the grid above what a customer consumes on site is paid at what's called the retail uh, rate for electricity, in, or in other words, the rate that you pay for your electricity on a per kilowatt hour basis. Compensation for this excess production will be provided as monetary credits on the customer's bills, and those credits will continue to roll over. Uh, separately, under the netting tariff, projects are eligible to submit in bids for these renewable energy credits that I mentioned earlier. And for any, any rec, rec payments, or renewable energy credit payments, those will be made quarterly. And just to reiterate, the service term for any projects under this, under this program is for 20 years, and that is regardless of whether or not they pick the bio tariff or the netting tariff. The new program has two portions. One is a competitive solicitation for larger projects, more specifically for projects that meet the low emissions project criteria, the large zero emissions projects criteria, and the medium zero emissions project criteria that are listed below. The table also shows the new sizes for projects as well as a comparison against the historical LREC ZREC project sizes. I mentioned that there are two parts of the program, the competitive solicitation process that, that I just walked through, as well as a administratively set rate for smaller projects, more specifically for projects that are equal to or less than 200 kilowatts in size. Those projects still have the same option between a buy-all and a tariff, um, but the pricing will be a little bit different between the two. So for small zero emissions projects that select the buy-all rate, they will receive a rate that is roughly equivalent to 20 cents per kilowatt hour. Well, whereas projects 
uh, small zero emission projects, rather, that select the netting tariff will receive net metering and compensation at the retail rate for the energy portion uh, of their compensation. And then for the rec, they will receive what is roughly equivalent to nine and a half cents per kilowatt hour for the energy attributes, or rather the environmental attributes of their system. For, for this category, there's actually a two week window for projects to submit their bids. All projects that submit their bids into that two week window are eligible to receive this. If more than the, the total capacity under this category uh, applies to the small uh, zero emissions category, then there will be a random selection process to select which projects get picked. After that, if there's additional capacity in the small zero emissions category, projects will be selected on a rolling or a first come first sure basis. The rates that I just spoke to are only applicable for small zero emissions projects that apply in 2022. Puro will annually review the tariff rates that I just mentioned, both for the buy-all and for RECs under the netting tariff annually, and will set that rate for subsequent years uh, in the coming months. The rates that I just went over for the small zero emissions project category only apply to projects that are submitted in 2022. For subsequent years, Pira will annually review data for small zero emissions projects and will set the rate for the, the immediate, immediate following year. So the buy-all rate for 2023, as well as the rec value for, under the netting tariff for 2023 will be set by Pira through a, a public proceeding in 2022. As I mentioned previously, the RFP for this, this next year or year one of the new program will be released on February 1st of 2022 and bid forms will be due on March 14th, 2022 by 1 p.m. Additionally, the electric utilities will hold a bidders conference uh, and will allow bidders to submit questions for clarification by February 11th. For more information, we'd encourage you to visit your electric utilities dedicated webpage, the link for which will be included in the web page that this is posted at. And for additional uh, questions, we'd also encourage you to reach out to either your electric utility or Pure's Consumer Affairs and contact information for, for both groups will be included in this webpage.